Our next speaker is from the Attorney General's office, and Nick Cox is here to talk about the fine work that he has been doing across the state of Florida, educating prosecutors in our community here. We have a state attorney who has pan-picked prosecutors in the 8th Judicial Circuit to become our voices against elder abuse. And that is happening thanks to Nick Cox and the Attorney General across the state of Florida. We're starting to get experts in the field of exploitation. So come on up here, Nick, and tell us more about what you're doing. Um, the good news is the lawyer is here. Because I know you all woke up this morning and you said to yourselves, oh, this guy, David Brancaccio, from National Public Radio and Marketplace, and uh, oh yeah, he's going to be there. But we're going to get to hear from a lawyer now. <laughs> so, so there you go. You know, I got to say, I, I am convinced now that Shannon doesn't like me, though, because seriously, I've got to follow David Brancaccio. <laughs> I mean, this guy's paid for a living to, to be on the radio all over the country and tell us about economics and everything. And I got to tell you, David, my wife and I are huge fans. Before we leave, I got to get a picture because it's going to drive her crazy. <laughs> I, I would be honored too, and I would really like you to also get me in touch with Kai Rizdahl, and we'll be all set. <laughs> um, my name's, again, my name's Nick Cox, and I'm actually the Florida statewide prosecutor. And I'm appointed by Ashley Moody, our Attorney General, and formerly Pam Bondi, who, uh, y'all want to know how I got my job? I'm not really particularly bright. And if you can't tell, I'm really a pretty quiet, shy guy, too. Um, but Pam Bondi was my intern back in 1990 in the State Attorney's Office in Tampa. So, you know, it's all about who you know, right? And then uh, Attorney General Moody just happened to also be from Tampa, Florida, which is my hometown, so it just worked out well. But I'm the statewide prosecutor, and many of you probably, if you've ever dealt with courts before, criminal courts, you've dealt with the state attorneys. And basically, Florida is set up with, with 20 state attorneys throughout the state of Florida. And here, as Shannon had mentioned earlier, you have a guy named Bill Cervone. And Bill Cervone, I will tell you, is one of the best state attorneys in the state of Florida, hands down. He's phenomenal. I consider Bill a very, very good friend of mine. And, uh, and, you know, and what Shannon said earlier about what he's wanting to do in the area of crimes against seniors is very true. And that's one of the big things we need as prosecutors. And law enforcement, I saw this guy. You have a big gun on your side. I hope you're a cop. Because <laughs> sometimes I'm not popular with people with guns. Um, <laughs> No, but I mean, you know, one of our biggest problems is with, with, with prosecution is we don't always get it. We haven't always gotten the message. You know, we have our hands full, and, and there's a lady here, Laura Moody, who was a prosecutor over across the state from me, over, over uh, uh, what, what's, Brevard County. And she's a specialist in this stuff. She buries me with knowledge about crimes against seniors. But the key is, is that Laura became one of our statewide experts, as prosecutors go. And we're starting to see more and more of that. About 20 years ago, there was an attorney, do you all remember an attorney general named Bob Butterworth? Yes. I got to work for General Butterworth many years ago, too. And about 20, 22 years ago, General Butterworth wrote an article called The Approaching Storm. Actually, he didn't write it. There's a surprise. <laughs> he had a Pulitzer Prize winner named John DeGroote write this. And John's whole theory in this thing was there's an approaching storm in Florida because we're going to have, we're seeing the graying of Florida, me, and, me included. You know, we are, we are a destination state. A lot of people come here to retire. Our population is growing. And as our population grows and our population gets older, I mean, we are just naturally going to see our population of seniors grow and grow. And one of his biggest theories was, is we got the baby boomers coming. And the baby boomers are not going to sit back and be quiet. And we're there. And now it's time for all of us in law enforcement to really grab a hold of this and respond. It's been a problem. I think Shannon will tell you. Historically, we haven't done it well. I'm just going to say it. We haven't done it well. Part of it is because... People who are become victims are embarrassed. 
They're scared. Because how many of you have actually been to court? Let me put it this way. How many of you have not been to court before? Have never really been in a courtroom? I mean, a lot of people will generally raise their hands. It can be intimidating. It can be really, really intimidating. But you got to remember one thing is, number one, David mentioned this earlier. Anybody can be a victim. You're looking at one. I have been an assistant state attorney where I handled everything from petty thefts to death penalty cases. I was a consumer protection lawyer in the attorney general's office for three years. I taught law school over at Stetson University College of Law for about four years, and one of the things I taught was consumer protection and criminal law, and you're looking at a victim. I was, my wife and I were victims of an identity theft. They stole from our own account. So my, my message to you and those of you that serve people that are seniors is, get the message out. It can truly happen to any of us, including Florida statewide prosecutor. And what, what, am, I, am I ashamed of it? Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm ashamed because I'm the statewide prosecutor. How, how the heck does that happen to me? Really, guys, I'm here to protect you, but I can't protect myself. No, but it can happen to anybody is my point. Secondly, when it comes to court, we, we got to demystify court, and, 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 we, and there's more of an effort to do that. Laura can probably tell you, Karen Murillo, who's with my office right now, probably one of the best hires I've ever made, is a lady who was doing this kind of work down in Palm Beach. She was one of Laura's uh, counterparts down in Palm Beach, but I got her now. <laughs> and they'll tell you, we're seeing more and more prosecutors that are specializing in this. We're seeing courts that are responding with specialty courts. Courts that deal with mental health, courts that deal with veterans, courts that deal with seniors, court services that are out there for seniors. You know, and we need to realize we need to take advantage of those, but also those courts are there because they're there to serve you. They're there to serve your clients. It's just a realization of knowing they're there. You know, I, I, I want to ask the officer, but <laughs> since he's got a really big gun and I don't want to embarrass him, um, I'm not going to do it, but those of you who have been in the industry or who have dealt with either a police officer or a prosecutor before, when you were reporting a crime involving a senior, how many of you ever heard the term, I'm sorry, but that's a civil matter? <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, it's a civil case. That's something where you need to go talk to your lawyer or you need to have your client hire a lawyer, but it's not for us. That can happen from law enforcement officers who respond to the call, generally a uniformed law enforcement officer who responds. You can find that when you go to court. You'll have a prosecutor who doesn't know better, who hasn't been trained like this, who can say to you, you know what, I understand this was charged, but it's really not a crime. It is probably. It is. But we have got to educate ourselves. You know, when I was walking in just now, I... I parked on the far end of the parking lot. My God, this place is packed. I parked on the far end of the parking lot, and as I walked in, I saw an Alachua County Sheriff's deputy, and, and Shannon just pointed this out a minute ago by having people raise their hands. I saw an Alachua County Sheriff's deputy's car. I saw a JSO, or Jacksonville Sheriff's Office car. You know, we, we saw hands raised in here for prosecutors. I don't know if there's a judge in here, but I'm not gonna call them out because I don't wanna get in that kind of trouble. <laughs> Contempt ain't fun. Um, but you know, you, you have officers, you have prosecutors, and you have courts that are getting really interested, and we have an opportunity. You know, I work with a lady named Ashley Moody, who's Florida's Attorney General. I just mentioned her a minute ago. And Ashley Moody is really, really dedicated. And I'm not just saying this because I work with her and I like her. She's really dedicated to bring attention to these issues. I will actually tell you, I was just looking through the agenda, and, you know, you can kind of find Ashley's fingerprints all over the agenda. Number one, you got me here. I work with Ashley. There's a lady named Ellen Cheek who's going to be speaking later. She's from Bay Area Legal Services. You know, one of Ash the reasons that Ashley has made this one of her top three priorities as the Attorney General is because she grew up around it. Her mother is an attorney at Bay Area Legal Services in charge of the Elder Law Division. She handles matters like this all the time. And so I always tell people, you know, and again, I'm not just saying this because I like her, but we got a real opportunity here with Attorney General Moody here wanting to deal with this. 
You know, Shannon mentioned a minute ago, and I was referring a minute ago to how we really need to start working on educating prosecutors, more prosecutors, law enforcement, and people that can specialize in this and work on it. And that's what General Moody has us doing already. Stetson Law School out of the St. Pete area, Gulfport, uh, down in Pinellas County. Uh, Karen can tell you more about it later because she's been running it for us, but we've been having webinars where we have officers, uh, you know, deputies, sheriffs, whoever it might be, prosecutors, anybody in those communities who wants to lo log in, and we have webinars with specialists to, to, te to teach them, to educate them, to make sure that these people understand it's not a civil case. You know, people, we need to understand better that when we have a victim who, as, as David had put it, is starting to kind of lose it a little bit, who's not on the ball, I like to, to you know, who, who is starting to suffer the early forms of dementia maybe, maybe even Alzheimer's. And once, and I, I'm guilty of it myself from years and years ago, once a prosecutor hears that, a lot of prosecutors go, there goes my case. It's over with, because I don't have a victim. Because one of the most basic tenets in, in prosecution when you're talking about fraud or theft is, you gotta have somebody say, I didn't want them to take my property. It's an element of the crime. But if they have fraud or dementia, we may lose that. They may not remember it or anything else. But there's a lot of other ways to do that. There's other people that can be victims, can be, that can be witnesses to that. You know, there, there's other ways of proving the elements of the crime, even if our victim is gone. Because a lot of times, the condition of that person, the mental status of that person, proves our case for us. It makes it that much easier, to be honest. And so it's a matter of educating prosecutors and law enforcement that that's the case. You know, those officers that I mentioned a minute ago, the uniformed officers that show up to take the reports, it's not their fault if they tell you it's a civil case. It's honest to God, not their fault. Because police officers, I happen to be the attorney for the commission in Florida that licenses or certifies, as we call it, all police officers in the state. And we give them about a two-hour program when they go through their training on crimes involving seniors. And we'll give them more time on fraud and everything else, too. But the point is, it's not a major league focus. They have so much to learn, it's incredible. That's why officers like Officer Big Gun over here <laughs> is so important to this. Because that's when we need to get to officers like this. It's not always just finding the officers, it's finding the right officer. And it's finding the right prosecutor. You know, like I said, historically, I'm gonna say it, we've dropped the ball. We haven't, pre we haven't prepared for the approaching storm like we, we should have. But the news is, we're getting there and we're getting there quickly. People like Laura Moody, Karen Murillo, State Attorney Bill Cervone. You know, State Attorney Phil Archer, who was her boss. David Ehrenberg, who was Karen's former boss down in, in, in Broward County. We're getting it, and we understand it, and we're taking steps. You know, I, I was, uh, you know, like I said, I was a victim. Uh, but I've been through this myself. Uh, my mother, I lost my mother about two years ago to Alzheimer's. And before, you know, I did everything I could, everything I possibly could to keep my mother in the community, to keep her at home, as you all know, it's a goal of all of us. I, th I think it's all of us would have that goal. To keep my mom at home and, and to let her enjoy every possible moment she could. And, and you know, then it got to the point where we couldn't do it any longer. But while she was at home, my mom was, was approached numerous times. The things that David played for you, several of those happened to my mother. I own, a, I own some small businesses in Tampa and I have a very good friend who is significantly older than me. He was a colonel in the Air Force, flew in Vietnam. Uh, he was a fighter pilot and everything. And you know, kind of like what David was talking about, one of those people that you're like, yeah, he's a good one. He was, he's, he's out there for us, he fought for us, he deserves everything, he deserves great golden years. And he owns a business similar to mine, and he got one of those phone calls. David was talking about the gift cards. He got one of those phone calls, though, that was kind of related to that, where they said, your business, you haven't paid your electric bill. Haven't paid your electric bill, 
and you know we we've tried to get in touch with you we haven't been able to you're scheduled for shutoff later this afternoon now this is a guy who you want to talk about the guy that was on the ball david this guy was sharp and and he was a colonel in the air force very well educated man and was sharp as a tack and fell for it and fell for it and he went down to a uh, 7-Eleven or wherever they sell them, and got something called the Green Dot Card. And he was told, you got to take this, get the Green Dot Card, call me back, give me the number, and we will make sure we call off the guys who are coming out to shut off your electricity. And he could not find a law enforcement agency that would take the report on that because they thought it was civil. You know, that just shouldn't be happening. You know, in some of our larger cities, I mean, Gainesville for that matter, Jackson. Are you from Jacksonville? Gainesville. Oh, you're the Gainesville guy. Well, Gainesville, wherever the JSO guy, Jacksonville Sheriff's Office guy is, you know, you're going to see officers like this who are, who are learning about it, who are specializing in it, and who know what they're doing. But in some of the more rural, rural areas, if you're from a more rural area of the state, you may not see that. And the key is to find the right person. But I will tell you, for those of you that are in the, is that clock right, Shannon? Okay, because, you know, Brancaccio stopped right at 10.15. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, because, you know, here's a secret. I didn't want him to take up one minute of my time, because I'm a lawyer, and I got a captive audience, and we kind of like that. By the way, did y'all ever hear what's the difference between a dead snake in the road and a dead attorney in the road? Skid marks before the snake. But it's a matter, for those of you in the industry, it's a matter of helping us educate ourselves. We need you. I'm, not, I'm trained in the law. I'm not trained in neuroscience. I'm not trained in Alzheimer's and dementia. I'm not trained in all those things. I need you all to help me. And I think that all the prosecutors around the state need your help. Now, there's those of us, like Laura Moody, I keep pointing to her, and she's going to, I'm going to get back there, and she's going to sink her fingers into me or something for doing it. But there's people like Laura Muti and Karen Murillo who are going to reach out to y'all. But that's not going to happen everywhere all over the state. So I would ask y'all to consider reaching out to your state attorneys. Because I can tell you I have a great deal of confidence on all of my colleagues. And if you reach out to them and talk to them about this and tell them you want to help, tell them you want to help them start a task force, whatever it may be, they will welcome you. If something is already in place, they should be welcoming you into that as well because we need your help. You know, we're a long way along. I mean, you know, I think in the agenda, Shannon put down that the, um, uh, the message was that the future is bright, and she's right. You know, things are much, much better now, and I say that to probably some of you in the audience going, no, they're not, because I can't get this case taken care of, but there's people you can go to, and you need to. You know, it's all about communication, it's all about relationships, and that includes us. You know, we, we're not on some high horse here. You know, I'm just another person like any of y'all. I'm just another victim like many of y'all. But we got to attack this together, and it's all about communication and relationships. You know, earlier, I see Ellen out there now. I, earlier, I, um, uh, earlier today, I, got, I saw an email I got yesterday from a lady at Bay, Bay Area Legal Services, who again, you're going to hear from Ellen later on. And Bay Area Legal Services has tried and tried to get these relationships for years with law enforcement. And it, they've had some success and haven't had some success. And so we got involved recently with them, and we said, let's get points of contact, let's start working together. And just the other day, she sent me an email that I just read this morning. And it's about a, a victim who was 72 years old who's a victim of a fraud, very clear fraud. And typically, she would have a real hard time probably being able to sell this to a prosecutor. But because she has someone to go to now, because she has people that are listening, and that's our job, because she has someone that's listening, we're going to go on this thing and we're going to attack it. You know, we've got to start thinking outside the box. You know, historically, like I mentioned earlier, we might see a case where someone's developed dementia or some, some, something that is affecting their activities of daily living. That's another thing we got to do. We got to make sure prosecutors learn all of the cool terms that they use in the aging industry. 
But you know, we have, so we have somebody, I was just speaking with our chief the other day about someone who's having these kind of problems and who has, it's the same story as David mentioned, this person is 87 years old and has a 24-year-old girlfriend. And she, and she, yeah. Part of me goes, all right, dude. Um, but we know what's going on. We, we know what's going on. And he recently took $1.3 million and he put it into a joint account with her and she immediately tries to withdraw it. Immediately, within days, is trying to withdraw it. By the way, she's a foreigner. She came in and she actually married him. And, you know, we also know what's going on there. She's trying to get into the U.S. and stay. But he's convinced that she loves him and he doesn't care because he loves her. And this is what he wants. And, you know, I think I preach to the choir here when I tell everybody it's not what he thinks. As a matter of fact, she's done it once before. But we can't convince him. So we're having to get creative. And we were just going back and forth the other day talking about the fact he has no diagnosis whatsoever. Again, another guy, as David would say, that's on the ball. But there's got to be something. There's got to be something she did that was fraudulent, where she lied to him, where she misled him. Because if you can get into those areas, you can start talking about theft and fraud. But we've got to start thinking that way. We've got to get out of the mode, and we are getting out of the mode where we say it's just a civil case, or we can't do it because they have dementia. But we need y'all's help, because this is something, this is unlike most prosecutions we ever do. This takes a lot of effort, and it takes a lot of dedication, and we really do need your help. But I will tell you the news is good, and I'm going to kind of end off where I kind of sort of started off as well, which is with Attorney General Moody, because I don't think I've seen, I worked for, y'all mentioned, I mentioned to y'all earlier, Bob Butterworth, who was a, a wonderful Attorney General too. And General Butterworth was very, very concerned about crimes against seniors. And I've worked for other office holders who have been very, very concerned about crimes against seniors. I haven't seen one like General Moody. Maybe it's because of her time watching her mom at Bay Area Legal Services try to rescue people who got themselves into trouble. Maybe it's because she saw during those times people lose their, lose their life savings and their golden years went away. I don't care what the reason is. She's ready to fight like crazy on this and has already cut us loose with a senior protection team that we're going to start doing this. And we want to be a part of the fight. We just need your help. We are at a time where we have an opportunity. Let's take it and run with it. Thank you very much.